Next, I would like to talk about some of the common dockers. To get to your dockers, you can actually go up to Window, Dockers, and there's a whole bunch of different dockers in here. There's primarily two main ones that you're going to be using. Those two are the Object Properties and the Object Manager. In this case, I have both of those open in my Docker panel. If we go over to the Docker panel, you can see I have three Dockers already open. Hints, Object Properties, and Object Manager. And these are tabbed so I can click through them. Now, the first one I'd like to talk about is the Object Manager. The Object Manager is a listing of all of the items within your document. And in this case, the way that it's set up is that there's a master page, which is there by default, and then page one. We've only have a one page document, so this shows the first page. Now there's a couple different things listed. One is guides, and the other is layer one. Layer one shows that there's a single curve on there, and that's this curve that we just generated. So if I go through and actually create another curve on here, You can see that there's two curves. So now I could select either of those curves by clicking on my picker tool. And I can select one or the other. But sometimes when we have a complicated document, we have lots of different objects. And it's hard to select the exact object by clicking on it on the screen. But a lot of times, we can go into our object manager and actually just click on the object that we want to select. So we'll use the object manager to help us select or identify different objects or curves in a document that has a lot of components to it. You don't need to use the object manager all the time, but it is there and can be used as a tool. The next one I'd like to talk about is the object properties. This one you will be using quite a bit. If you click on the object properties, and I'm going to click off my document to deselect everything on the screen, we have three tabs at the top. One is for outline, one is for fill, one is for transparency. In this case, the ones that we're dealing with most of the time are the outline and the fill. What the Docker has here is the outline properties for an object. In this case, I do not have an object selected, so these are my default settings. But if I clicked on an object, it would then bring up the properties for that object in that Docker. Now, if I wanted to change the width of the outline, of this object, I could go up to my properties bar and change it. Or I could actually come over to my properties docker and change it here. Either way works. The one thing that we will notice is that our docker has a few more options than our property bar. As you can see we have line color, line type. This option here gives the limit in which we make sharp corners. But we can also see how the, the corners are made. Do we want to make it sharp corners, rounded corners, beveled corners? We can also look at the end conditions of how we want the end of the line to look. So if I make this line a little thicker, let's see, make it, and then I'm going to zoom in here. The ends of these lines are square. I can also make them rounded, or I could have them extended square. In that case, they look just like the square ones. So those are some additional options that we have for the outline. Next, we have the fill. If we click on our fill option, we'll see that we have a few different options up here. We have no fill, uniform fill, a fountain fill, vector pattern fill, bitmap pattern fill, a two color pattern fill. For the most part, we usually go with no fill or uniform fill. In this case, the object that I'm looking at is this shape. I've created this rectangle. If I select my rectangle, it shows that it has no fill. But if I want to fill it with a color, I can click on Uniform Fill. Now, it, by default, it'll select it as black. But in this case, I want to change it the color. I can actually create one out of my CMYK. I can click on my Pantone colors and have my Pantone colors come up and select from there. In this case, I'm going to select one from the side here and make it a blue. For the most part, we usually deal with either black, white, or no fill. If we want to remove a fill, we can just click on no fill and it removes the fill from that object. There is one other main section under the object properties that will only come up when you have text selected. 
In this case, we have our stroke, our fill, but if we select on some text, we'll actually have a text object that comes up, or this, this A. And in this case, what it'll show is the character properties for that object. What we will see here is the font, font size, the fill for the font, the background fill for the font, and the stroke for the font. A couple things I want you to know is typically fonts are just filled. Another thing we could do is stroke the font, which means we put a line around it as opposed to filling it. And in this case, I can add that right down here. I can say two point. It also has a color. Now with the fill, I'm going to turn this fill off and I'm going to say no fill. Now you can see that it's just an outline of that font. It's not filled in. Typically, those are the two different ways that we will handle our fonts. Either we'll have a fill with no stroke, or we'll have a stroke with no fill.